thousand succulent growers, it's Lynn. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I heat my cactus and succulent polytunnel over the winter months. Now, I just want to start this video off by saying a very special thank you to all of those that left lovely, lovely comments on my last video, which was my poster, my blooming lovely cactus poster that I made, video I made the other day. Lovely comments, and so happy that you, you love the poster. And also a special thank you to the, those who've already bought the poster as well. That's absolutely lovely, and thank you so much, guys. So, um, wonderful to see that support. Now, these are the two um, wonderful gadgets that I use to heat up my polytunnel over the winter months. And I'm going to talk about both of these. This one is a heater, one by BioGreen. And this one is a dehumidifier that also gives off heat as well as dries the air. And I use both of these depending on the temperature, what it's going to be. Now, I'll just start off by showing you the temperature at the moment in the polytunnel is actually, it's only a little bit over five Celsius. Um, which is about 41 degree Fahrenheit. It's two Celsius outside at the moment. So this has been very good. I've just turned off the dehumidifier and that's brought it up, as you can see, just above five. So it works very well. And what I like to do with the cacti and succulents, I have a mixed selection of many different types of cacti and succulents. And they do vary in their minimum temperatures. For example, Lophophora can take very cold, even minus temperatures if they're dry. Some of my other cacti, such as Matucana, like these, prefer to be kept ideally above five, but a minimum of five if they're dry. So I sort of go for an all round minimum temperature, absolute minimum of five Celsius, which is 40. Fahrenheit. But usually the temperature in here, especially now the sun is coming out, rises to about 7 to 8 Celsius over the winter months. Now these two um, wonderful machines that I swear by to keep my cacti and succulents warmer or warmish over the winter, they're, they're absolutely brilliant and I have made separate videos on both of these and I'm also going to share a lot of links down below to more information on these products because I'm not affiliated with them in any way but I've used them now for two to three years and I can highly recommend them if you want to look for a good heater for your greenhouse or your polytunnel. Now first I'm going to talk about the heater. Now this is one by BioGreen and this is the BioGreen Phoenix heater, an absolutely brilliant heater especially for large areas. This polytunnel here is 10 by 20 feet so it's a large polytunnel and uh, a lot of space obviously I have to heat. So a little tiny fan heater, a little electric fan heater would not do the job in here. It would just blow the air into a small area. This particular powerful machine, it's like the Rolls Royce of of the heaters for greenhouses. It's got, um, I'll just show you the big powerful fan there that blows the air all across right to the back of the polytunnel and lifts the air up. So I could walk in here when this, this heater has been on an hour and check the measurements of the actual temperature and it's pretty uniform all across. So it's a very, very good heater. I've just, I normally turn it like that, put it up. Now you can also hang this from the ceiling as well. So it's one that you can have hanging up on some chains, or also have, have also onto a table or a floor. Very, very good heater. Now, I set this heater up when the temperature outside is forecast two Celsius or below. For example, tomorrow night they forecast minus two, so this heater is going to be set up. And the reason why I use the heater on the very cold nights, and I use the dehumidifier on the nights where it's forecast three between sort of six celsius and three is because this does give off heat as well and it brings the, the dehumidifier brings heating up by about three degrees to what it is outside so if they only forecast three celsius for example outside this will bring it up to about six or seven celsius during the night but i'm going to talk about this dehumidifier after so this is why I use this one on the cold nights is because it's a more powerful machine and it doesn't uh, it, it it has a sensor on it here. Now this is a, a temperature 
a thermostat I should say that you can set to keep the temperature at that temperature to stop it dropping below and we have our set at two it doesn't actually have a, a thermometer temperature on it so it doesn't say 10 celsius 20 celsius you just have to play around with this to find the right temperature we have this at number two which keeps when this heater is on it keeps it around five celsius minimum the heat the heat throws out and then it starts to rise to about seven celsius and then it will cut off and then it, the heat will slowly drop because as I say it's very well insulated in the polytunnel. The heat will slowly drop and then when it drops to five or j just, just a little bit below five then the heat will kick back on again and keep it up to that temperature so it never drops below five. And the good thing about having a thermostat on this BioGreen Phoenix heater is because it saves a fortune on electricity because if if you have one of the heaters where you just have to switch on and leave it on all night and you have it at a thousand watts you know two thousand watts it's going to cost a lot of electricity and the heat's just going to build up and up and up and up but having one with a thermostat it cuts off when it reaches a desired temperature kicks back on when it when it drops below so it saves a fortune on electric even though electric heaters are pricey especially now with everything rising up so much and electricity but this is a very good um, value for money heater it's pricey to buy but it's a very very good investment and it's very very good biogreen as well also do a a range of different types of heaters depending on the size of your greenhouse or your polytunnel and they do a smaller version of this as well and different types so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down below in the video description to the actual bio green um, there's a, they do ha actually have a YouTube channel where they showcase all of their individual heaters and also go through the um, how, how to use them and everything the, the specifications of them I should say and uh, it give you a lot more information on these type of heaters including this one as well and I'll also link up above a video to one that BioGreen have made actually about this heater including the information on how to set the thermostat and also the settings I said this has three settings this is for the fan if you just want cool air in the summer and it's got 1000 uh, kilowatts 1800 2800 I find even just at the 1000 kilowatt and at the two keeps it at 5c in, in the in the polytunnel so it's very very good investment highly recommend this this bio green phoenix so that's the one I use on the very cold nights and they forecast a very cold spell here in Ireland and the UK from tomorrow night onwards minus temperatures so this is going to be working its magic now when the nights where it's not so cold say it's forecast if it forecasts any night above 5c then I don't have any heater on at all I ventilate the, I open the door during the day to ventilate ventilation is so important but obviously if, it, if it's forecast nights below 5 but above two celsius for example i'll then use this dehumidifier instead because the dehumidifier gives off heat dry heat so it has the advantage of drying the air and also giving off heat so if it's two celsius outside and this is on during the night it will raise the temperature in here to about five or six celsius and it has the bonus of drying the air so it keeps the air nice and dry as i say it's the dampness that's the biggest problem in uh, ireland and uk not necessarily the cold nights so this works it's magic but it, but it does have and then what happens is when it sets itself to the right humidity I have it set at 40% humidity and once it's set once it reaches that humidity the machine switches off so obviously that's great because it's not constantly running as well and that saves a lot on electricity but if it's a very cold night outside and it's dry in the polytunnel and it reaches that temperature and it cuts off it could go half an hour sometimes an hour before it switch back on again and the temperature can drop very cold in here now if it's not too cold of a night that's fine as I say the polytunnel is very insulated with bubble wrap and the heat, heat does stay in here so it only drops slowly but to be on the safe side on the very cold nights that's why I have the heater because that's guaranteed to keep it minimum of five celsius if this cuts off it could drop very cold so this is only a bit of a bit of a, a tip you know if you have one of these dehumidifiers they give off great dry heat and they're great to use as a you get two in one you get the dry heat and you also get the dry air as well but if it's very cold or you live in a very cold climate where forecasts 
minus temperatures most nights where you live I recommend just going for for a heater but this here this this dehumidifier is one by ProBreeze and it's one that's especially for cold environments and this is important because if you just get any type of dehumidifier a lot of them won't work unless the temperature is a minimum of 10 celsius to 15 celsius so if you've got a greenhouse such as here or polytunnel that has to be kept cold over the winter five celsius for example it's not going to work properly unless you have a warm environment for dehumidifier but this one is especially for garages basements cellars workshops anywhere where the temperature is could be one celsius kept cold it's a powerful machine and it's especially for cold environments now i'm going to also put a link down below to more information about this pro breeze dehumidifier because it's a special one especially for cold environments they do pro breeze themselves do a, a range of many different types of dehumidifiers mostly for the home or the office but this particular one is one especially for cold environments so i'll link down below to a link where it tells you all the specifications about this particular dehumidifier so if you want one for your your greenhouse or your polytunnel to keep the humidity down and add a bit of extra heat on the not so cold nights i highly recommend this one and it has also has a when the fan comes on and the dry air and the heating element works this will lift up here and it blows out that dry warm air into the across the the polytunnel and it it's lovely again uniform heat nice dry air and it brings the, the humidity down in this polytunnel from about 85 percent to about 40 percent and i've switched this off now i had this on last night because it forecast two celsius and it's still two celsius outside but as you can see it brought the temperature up in the polytunnel to just over five and the air is lovely lovely and dry in here which is really important for cacti because high humidity is the biggest cause of fungi and uh, other issues during the winter with cacti so this is great to use so highly recommend this and i have made separate videos on both of these machines when i've installed them and set them up so i'll also link them videos down below if you want to find out more about them but that is what i use to heat my greenhouse over the winter months now i just want to mention as well i'll show you i don't just put it on and then just not worry about the rest of it it's important that you have proper insulation when you have a heater and uh, this keeps the heat in and saves a lot of ele electricity because obviously when this heater cuts off when it's reached the temperature same with the dehumidifier when it cuts off and it's reached the um, the humidity it the, the more insulated your greenhouse is the more it's going to keep the heat in and the dry air in and we have bubble wrap this thick bubble wrap on here which it traps the heat I should say and also our floor we insulate the floor we've got terrapaulin down and also below this terrapaulin we have tiles slabs I should say with some sort of foam as well underneath it like a thin foam and so it's sort of spongy when you walk on it and the terrapaulin stops any damp from rising up so it's well insulated and that saves a lot of money on electricity as well because if this wasn't very insulated as soon as this reaches the temperature and it cuts off it's probably not going to be that long before it has to kick back on again when the temperature drops we also have a big towel here that we put over our door because our door has this is a, a polytunnel that does have gaps in it as you can see a lot of greenhouses will have gaps especially around the door i'll show you more so here here so when we lock it like that this comes across and that traps the heat and dry air in and that also saves a lot on uh, having to have the heating keep coming on constantly to get the temperature now this dehumidifier here it's one that we have on continuous and as I mentioned more in the individual video on this dehumidifier but we have a pipe that goes down into this is one of our old um, hose lock spray containers that we use and we just put the continuous hose pipe down here and that collects all the water so last night alone we had four litres of water that got into the got that we got from the, the air in the polytunnel so there's a lot of water there and this is great because you don't have to worry about emptying it all the time so that's a, another good tip as well and as I say they're both cut off intermittently when it reaches the desired temperature or humidity and that saves a lot and not having to have a heater on permanently so there we go a little bit about how I heat my greenhouse polytunnel over the winter and you can hear that it's starting to rain 
and it's a little bit like sleet outside it's a very cold but it feels a nice uh, comfortable dry temperature in here so thank you so much for watching everybody and for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow your cacti and succulents don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos and you can also follow me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon and do check out my website for lots of articles and growing tips on there desertplantsofavalon.com I want to wish you all a warm plant-powered winter ahead Thank you.